Hello everyone, today we are going to go over the inventory system inside of Fleet Maintenance Pro. So our inventory system is where we want to track our parts. Um, it'll have a parts list that we can use and we can assign those parts to work orders or to maintenance requests. Um, we have a quantity here, so it'll track how much part you have in stock. And as you use that part over time with your work orders and maintenance, it'll subtract from the quantity. I can also add part receipts here uh, to make sure I have an accurate uh, stock count, basically. So first things first, we want to look on the left where we have warehouses. So you can add multiple warehouses if you wish. Usually these are reserved for uh, companies where you have multiple physical locations where you want to see, okay, I have this much of a part at location one or location two. Um, if you just have one physical location, you don't have to have multiple warehouses. You can just have one. Um, if you want to add warehouses, we'll go to setup at the top, go to warehouses, and then I can add, click the new button here, and I can add a brand new warehouse. So for the purposes of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll just call it new warehouse. Now it doesn't immediately show on the left because I don't have any parts assigned to it yet. Um, if there's a warehouse with no parts, it's automatically hidden by default. Um, now what we want to do, uh, let's go through adding a part. So we're going to click the new button on the top right. This will bring me to my new part screen. So here I can say what the part number is, the name. So let's go ahead and fill some of this out. So part number, I'm just going to call it test part name I'll call it test part same with the description manufacturer can be anything category this is the type of part it is so you can choose from this list um, if you go to setup and choice list you can add new categories here if you want so we'll go ahead and call this oil base cost that's how much this part usually costs it's a base default number so we're gonna go with five Unit of measure is usually each, um, but if you're dealing with fluids, you might want to do gallon or quart, like if you're doing oil, but we'll do each for now. Uh, UPC, so if you have a barcode scanner, um, you can plug it into the computer, um, you can scan the barcode on the part uh, to fill this in, and then if I go to an open work order and I add my tasks to it, I can bar bar uh, use the barcode scanner on that part uh, with the UPC code, and it'll automatically get added to my work order. So it saves you some time from having to go in and find, you know, type in the part number and find it that way. So if you have a barcode scanner, that would come in handy. We're gonna leave that empty. Um, custom, these are custom values, they're very flexible. So if there's a, a box here uh, that doesn't quite fit with your needs, you can call this whatever you want. And then I can add whatever value I want here, whatever makes sense for you. Um, enable inventory tracking. If I have this unchecked, I could still add parts to work orders as needed. It just doesn't tell me how much of the quantity I've used. It doesn't track that. Um, if I check this, uh, whatever quantity I have, as I use that part, it'll keep tabs and let me know if I'm low on stock. So we're going to leave that checked. Um, aisle row bin. This is where it's located physically in the warehouse vendor, uh, whoever you bought the part from, a cost center, if you're a larger company, who which department is responsible for ordering this part, basically. A quantity is how much I have. Reorder point is if it gets below a certain number. Um, so I'll go ahead and probably set this to like 10 or 20. Um, if it gets below that point, uh, it'll show up in red and notify you, hey, you know, this part is low. You probably want to order some more. Reorder quantity is when I do reorder it, how much of it do I want? And then max quantity is just like it says, the maximum amount that I would like to have on for this part. Lead time, uh, this is only used here mostly as a reference. It's how many days uh, it takes when you order the part for it to arrive. So that way you can kind of tell, okay, it's going to take me a week or two before this comes in. Um, type of, you have first in, first out, and last in, first out. Um, as I add receipts for this part, do I want to pull from the oldest part receipt or the newest one? Uh, most of the time, you would just leave this on FIFO. Now, I added that new warehouse. 
So I, I, I want to fill it out for uh, the new warehouse tab. Right now it's on warehouse number one. So I'm going to click on assign warehouse. I'm going to set it to new warehouse. And I'm going to fill this in. So I'm going to go ahead and type some items here. Set a cost center. I'm going to start with 10. Reorder point, let's make it five. Add 10 more. We'll leave all these empty here. I don't want this tab, so I'm going to try and right click and remove it. Okay, good. So now I just have my new warehouse tab. Everything here looks good. Uh, we should go over these other tabs at the top. Uh, so we've got the advanced tab. This is if you want to automatically add a markup to the part costs on your work orders. You want to reference uh, if it's got a warranty date, uh, 60 days, 90 days, you can put that in here. Part substitutions, if the part's out of stock, I can right click and add another part number um, for it to use in its place. And then if I have multiple barcodes uh, that link to this part, I can add those here. Like if you have different packaging or something like that. Photos, that's a photo of the part for reference, so you can know what it looks like. And then attachments, I can add a text file or a PDF, um, like a manual or something that goes with it if you wanted to. So everything here looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save on the bottom. Uh, one more thing to remember, if you're adding a lot of parts in at a time, if I hit save plus, it'll keep this window up, but just blank everything out. So that way you don't have to hit new the new button all the time. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and click save. On the left, if I click on all warehouses, so now I have new warehouse with my test part. If I hit the plus sign, this oil corresponds with my category for the part. So whatever you set it here, that's going to be like the way you can find it in this, in this tree. Um, so I've got my part here. I've got a quantity of 10. Now if I wanted to, I can go and use it on my work order. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to equipment. Just going to pick anything. I'm going to make a new work order. We'll do some generic repair. Let's go ahead and select the part for my task. I'm going to go and choose my test part. And I can tell it how many I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pick six. It automatically pulls the price for me. Um, I don't have to use that price if I want. I can override it and say these really were six or seven dollars. You can do that here. If it's under warranty, I can specify that. If there was a PO number associated with it where I had to use a purchase order to get that part in, um, I can use that as well. We're not going to worry about that right now. So I'll go ahead and click on save. So it's got my part here. In my parts tab, it shows up. And I can go ahead and save my work order. Now, even though it's an open status, when I go into inventory and refresh it, it shows that I've used that part. So you don't necessarily have to close the work order. So if you have a lot of open ones where you've used the parts, it'll still pull them from quantity because you don't want to use your same stock on two different work orders by accident. So we'll go ahead and complete this work order. Now if I go back to my inventory, it shows red because it's four and I have my reorder quantity was set to five. So it's letting me know that, hey, I've got a part that needs to be reordered. If I go back to my dashboard and go to inventory, it shows up here as well saying, hey, I should probably order some more because I'm running low. Now on each part, I can click on history and I can see when I receive the part with my stock adjustment. So every time I get new stock in, I can look at here and see what I've got. And I can go to usage and it'll tell me where I used that part and how many were used. So let's say I want to add some stock to this part. I want to receive more in. Um, so I'll click on my adjust button on the top. I'll leave it set to receipt up here. The day I received it, how many I'm bringing in. So let's say I'm ordering another 10. And then the price that I'm bringing it in. Now remember, we have a base cost of $5. So that's our default, you know, normal price for this part. However, I can receive it at whatever price I want. So let's say I've got a good deal. I could set this to $4 and say, okay, 
you know, I received these at a lower price. I'm going to charge less on my maintenance costs. Um, or it was more expensive this time around, so I can go in and, and set the price higher. So in this case, we'll go ahead and set it to, let's say, 750 So now I've got my part in here. If I go to history, it shows my last receipt, my original one, I received at $5, and I have four left of those. I've got a new receipt at $7.50, and I've ordered 10 more. So very handy here. If I go now, let's try to do a new work order. We'll do another repair. I can go to parts tab and add, or you can go into the maintenance task and you can select parts here. When I go into my part number and choose it, I can go to quantity used. I'm gonna set it to, let's say I use seven this time. I'll go ahead and save it. Now notice it split it up. So what happened was it used four, my last four in stock that were at $5, and then it used my new receipt, three of those at $7.50. So when I save it here, it shows up here. It calculates the correct cost for my work order. And when I go back into my inventory and check my history, it'll show that all the $5 parts are gone. Now I only have the $7. Dollar and fifty cent parts left. So it's very handy if you have different part receipts at different costs, it'll automatically track those prices for you as you add that to work orders. And then of course on my usage, it shows me, hey, I received the or I used the rest of those parts here, and then I used a few of them at 750, and it'll tell me which unit I used them on. We'll touch base on these buttons real quick. So transfer. If I wanted to transfer the part between warehouses, I can do that and say how many I want to transfer. Purchase order, if I'm running out of a part, we have a purchasing system where I can make a purchase order and say, hey, I want to order 20 more of these, and it has its own tracking um, for purchase orders. So this is a whole other part of the system that you can use. You don't have to, you can still just adjust. You don't have to use a purchase order, but it's there in case you need it. And that pretty much wraps up the basics for inventory. If you have any other questions, uh, please visit our website at mtcpro.com.